Hello, Tim Hughes here. I'm uh, the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. With me today, I've got McKenna um, Swayze, and uh, we're going to talk about Web3 um, and what that means from a marketing perspective. Before we dive in to talk about it, McKenna, where can people find you? Yes, uh, probably the best place is my newsletter. It's called Meta X Moda. Uh, it's on Substack, so Meta, like Meta X, woo, the letter, and then Moda, M-O-D-A at Substack, um, where I post all my th thoughts, the thoughts that I'm not having on this show, other thoughts, more yes. thoughts. Yeah. Um, so um, Web3, marketing, what on earth does it mean? Yeah, so I think it's we could start with defining Web3, uh, which yeah. is, is real hard, but um, worth, worth a shot. And in some ways, it's just the evolution of how we're gonna continue to interact with the internet um, and, and a more immersive, more interesting, more 3D internet. Um, I think there's a lot of debate about whether or not metaverse and uh, blockchain are both Web3. Um, and for me, the tie is really about as we pursue more digital, even more digital lives, digital ownership, and being able to understand authenticity for, for goods that are not physical uh, requires blockchain. Um, and, and there are other reasons to have blockchain as well, um, but I think it's a, a part of moving forward. So that's sort of my basic definition. Um, and I think for marketers for right now, this idea of Web 2.5 keeps getting batted around, like both of these sort of a technology ideas about a metaverse, so a more immersive 3D persistent web experience um, and a tokenization, a blockchain of being able to save records to a decentralized computer that anyone can access and that prove <clears throat> without a doubt who owns something or when something happened are already useful no matter where we slot them into the technological evolution. And this is going to be I mean, whether whether it's I think there's a certain amount of pullback because a lot of people, you know, I don't know what the figures are, but some people, some companies don't even have a website. Um, and to, to suddenly go to this 3D, um, I don't know about you, but I don't have um, um, any goggles on, or anything like that. Um, and to, to, to start having people needing to have those things to actually access thing, it's quite a big step. But there again you know, we, we, we've suddenly got these mobile phones and I think it's funny because my part, my partner is one of the few people that I know actually that has conversations on them. <laughs> She's actually having a conversation on a mobile phone right now, which is the way that she, she works with a particular person, a different company. And they talk on the phone, which for me, it's just like, do you still, cause, and, and we have these things in our, and I was, as I walked up to the stairs to talk, talk to you i was thinking why do we have mobile phone why haven't apple worked out we don't use you know we need to rethink the mobile phone because it's a mobile computer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. absolutely this, this, no, this change that's mind. taking place in terms of the in terms of the metaverse we will accept it after after some time absolutely and i think the headset thing is a it's not a red herring but it's, it doesn't have to be the point and it may not be the end game. I think there are a lot of companies betting that it will be. And obviously it's very fun and immersive and really like an obvious, a potential obvious evolution of internet computing and visual internet computing. That being said, I think we're pretty far from those experiences being seamless and very far from it being in everyone's home. Um, but that websites don't need to be 2D, that they can be a little bit more 3D how you can add AR to that. Um, I work with mostly retail and beauty brands. And so when you think about the internet shopping experience, e-commerce, it hasn't changed so much from like the first versions, whatever, 15 years ago, you're talking about a grid of images of outline outfits or products, you know, three by however many pieces they have in their inventory. And that is not great for discoverability. It's not how humans shop in person. And it's not nearly as fun as going into a boutique and rifling around and having your eyes sort of touch on different things. Now, we all know you don't have to park. It gets shipped the next day and you don't have to deal with humans. And we love that. So it has a lot of upsides, e-commerce. But we can definitely do better with sort of 3D, persistent, immersive web experiences that aren't necessarily virtual reality. Um, and I think that's borrowing from, say, gaming technology, which is obviously you know really the fringe of building these things taking that to other consumer use cases um, 
obviously Microsoft and Facebook are doing this and, and how is this going to affect our work day and will it affect work from home? And, and would you be able to socialize better if you had a virtual office where you could input the idea of proximity? I am near you and thus we can talk. Um, it feels a little, I think to me, uh, it feels a little um, false. But if you're a video gamer, that's totally how it works. You you know, you're, you have a headset on. If you become close to someone, you speak to them. So I think all these things will become more a part of our life. And, and then the more they're a part of our life, the more marketers can take advantage and say, do we put a billboard in that space? Um, obviously, how do we build a store? Uh, what do ads look like? What does acquisition journeys look like? So I, I agree. I think the headset is is definitely not in everyone's home. Um, but I don't think that the phone is a bad start for all of this. Yeah. So so I came across you because you wrote an article for Marketing Profs um, about CRM and NFTs. So explain to me how you're... Because I thought NFTs were just pieces of art that you put in the metaverse and and then people copied. Uh, explain <laughs> it to me. And I think that's a very reasonable uh, version of an NFT, but I think there's so much more. As I said, you know, the the idea that we're, you know, uh, putting ownership onto the blockchain is where this starts. And yeah. so there's so many ways in which you would want to have customer information that has an element of permanence. So there's a company called Poop. Uh, and they do a, a token for um, instances, moments in time. So you go to a concert, you go to even a webinar or a podcast, and you have a moment to flash a QR code, flash a near field technology chip, whatever. Um, and you get that POAP, which is a token, is a type of NFT, and it goes into your wallet, and it is now proof that you have been there. It's like a concert t-shirt. So now yeah. in the web 3.1, that POAP is in your wallet and anyone can scan using different wallet scanning tools uh, and understand who has that POAP and who was at that event. And so yep. the owner of the brand can say, okay, we want to give special uh, kudos or special access to people who go to our events. You could then, um, I think the term was token gate, though I see we're now calling it token unlock. You could token unlock your website and say, you log into your website, your you know Tim's e-commerce site, and if I log in with my wallet and I have that po up because I go to your events or I watch your podcast live, I now get special access to your content or merchandise or a discount or whatever it is. Um, and so that's, I mean, it is, that's a communication channel with your customers. Um, that's how it works today. I think we will see a lot more different types of wallets that will allow communication directly in wallet based on that. Um, <clears throat> that just gives you, it's a more... It's a different comprehensive view of your consumer. What are they doing online uh, that is blockchain related? Um, and so those, I think, are some like obvious examples of how you're going to go back and forth and give them things based on their wallet identity. So it's about, and that's about offering something for the super fan, isn't it? The 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 the, the special the special T-shirt or the um, the special access to the concert or something like that, which you could you could offer people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think I forget, I get this example wrong every time. I believe it's an American football team in Texas. It's owned by Mark Cuban, that part I remember, but they do it at the games um, and they do a, a, a token for attending games. And at some point you get free merch and then you get free tickets. Uh, and it's a way to do that. That's, that is, uh, I think it's authentic. It's um, not, I don't know the technical term. It's not scammable, right. Or at least within the realm of you know, people are always trying to hack everything, but um, you actually were there. Um, you can also do this with loyalty cards. Um, if you're like a frequent shopper, I spoke to a great startup yesterday that is giving you loyalty points for tweeting. So if you tweet about, again, Tim's podcast, um, you start accruing value. Um, and that value is actually, I mean, one of two things, it can actually be sold uh, if you wanted it to, or you can use it to then get better access to Tim's content or maybe, you know, a personal one-on-one -on -one dinner. I don't know how many tweets you have to do to get that. Um, but there's a lot of really cool ways that brands can go forward with that idea. Yeah. And, and I don't think that that's, that's not particularly new. Um, but the way that that's done in the past has been probably through email. Yes, absolutely. We signed up to an email list, didn't we? Yes. And I think it's the, the idea of putting it on the blockchain is the sort of irrefutability. It just is. And it's a fact. 
Um, and as we move our digital lives online, and I think we've seen this with privacy considerations now, wallets allow us to decide, uh, and I guess email does this to some extent too, but you can divide your personality um, and share different things. I think the identity portion, particularly I come from an advertising background. So the identity portion and, and how we'll connect and who we'll be able to connect with, I think that is a, a massive opportunity that has not really been dealt with. It's an opportunity and it's a risk, right? Uh, private. When I say things are written in the blockchain permanently, your email address, you just ditch it and move to a new one. Um, your blockchain, it might be harder to do that. So, but that's very fringe um, and probably not a, a serious concern today. So what else can Mark should marketers should be looking at from a, from a web three, web 3.0 perspective? Um, yeah, I think the most important thing is to just test it out yourself a little bit, pick one project or idea that you can buy into it. You don't even have to buy into it. It is now, I think we are finding that the trend is to token unlock things. And so if you don't buy in, you then don't get access to the, the next levels. Um, and can't understand what they're, what different brands are really testing. But, you know, find something you find is interesting, which has a barrier to entry that feels fun for you. Um, obviously, there are things that are play to earn. Um, there's this game called Step In where you take steps and you earn tokens. Um, and, and trying these out so that you can understand for a lot of brands that probably the activation won't be in 2022. It'll be in 2023. Um, mm -hmm. But if you don't have like a little bit of a personal understanding of how this is working, it can be hard to even assess which vendors you should work with, what agency is going to be able to describe this best to you. Um, because it is, a, I mean, this is going to involve a lot of technology players, right? Nobody's going to pull this off in a vacuum. Um, yep. But you want to be able to write, ask the right questions and, and understand what the opportunities are. And then, of course, and I should have led with this. The most important thing to me is that this is not a fad, uh, just like social media is not a fad but it aligns with your marketing strategy and it's not to do it just to do it. It's okay. Well, what's a new way of doing loyalty that will make our customers more excited about us, more loyal, more ready to be um, enthusiasts about our brands. If that's your ultimate marketing goal, people have different goals. Um, so to keep that in mind. And then as you have your eye open to different web three technology innovations, you can say, Oh, that is a great way to meet this goal that we're trying to do. And and what what tech, you've been talking a lot about B two C? How do you see this working in B two B? I know, I know. I think about that all the time, and I think the jury is still out. Obviously, uh, when we talk about evangelism, there uh, is definitely evangelism opportunities within B two B. Right? You have sort of a traditional sales cycle where you might have um, gosh, champions who aren't actually the decision maker. Um, and would it be worth? tokenizing that. I think the, the a drawback with a lot of these things is that they're very individualistic and they really accrue value to the holder of the token. And I don't know that we've seen situations yet where we understand how to do that on a corporate level. Um, obviously, there are financial situations that like the finance team has a lot to think about, about crypto and are we going to accept it? And how would you hold the treasury of the business? Um, I think the B2B, I haven't seen a lot of great B2B, um, it, neither activations nor even I, opportunities, unless you're talking about metaverse 3D immersive technology, making websites better, making opportunities to connect better, in which case, for sure, this is going to change the future of how we do work together um, and being able to meet in person. In, on a but, but, but I think if you look at some of the super brands, for example, you know, I see people that are... Um, Salesforce certified or HubSpot certified, then in fact they're super brands of those of those companies. So there must be something that the the certification would probably allow them to unlock. So it may not happen in the pre-sale, but certainly in the post-sale, where um, there's a there's an ability to say, you know, you're going to get because you're a user, you can get access to 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 to, to something or other. You're absolutely right. And that is a really good example. And also the, and let's call that like sort of related to the education space yeah. and sort of that authentication of you being a HubSpot expert or a power user um, and being able to authenticate that and it having like it being a part of your resume that can't be faked. Uh, yeah. And then it being an evangelism opportunity. I think absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's a really good example. 
So are you seeing anything in terms of influencer marketing or the curator economy at all in terms of Web 3.0? This is my favorite aspect because I think it will really, really revolutionize the way that the creator economy works. And, and here's an example. I was talking to a really interesting startup yesterday, um, and they are uh, essentially creating 3D worlds and brands and influencers can own these 3D. It's not a whole world. It's like a room or a house. Yeah. And so now you follow along. Let's just take Kim Kardashian because she's my favorite as an example. Yeah. She's and one of my follow- favorites She's got, she's the best marketer on earth, I think. She is, she is, she is, um, she's a genius. Yeah, all hail Kim. Um, and yeah. so you follow her along on Instagram and we're really involved in her life if you're following her on Instagram or TikTok or wherever and, and the show and et cetera. And, but it's 2D and she's selling us things um, and uh, you're, you're immersed in her life. And imagine a world where you could go into her home now, she's never going to want us, us super fans in her home because it's a bit creepy, but you could create a 3D version uh, yep. in which uh, she can host salons, she can host events, she can host parties, she can host concerts. Everything can be an affiliate link. You can rifle through the closet um, and you can really feel like you're in. Ki- OK, I know it's a little weird. That's why you don't do it in her real house. Um, <clears throat> you can see what's in her kitchen. Is she vegan this week? Anything. Um, now this is like future state, but I don't think we're so far from this and from her being able to create her world and let you into it, which she's already really done on Instagram and let's make it 3d and let's make it a little more immersive. Um, and, and I know that the, the thirst for, let's say what hand soap Kim uses in her guest bathroom, I'm sure is an affiliate link worth a million dollars. Um, so I think there's a, a huge opportunity there. And the other opportunities, of course, you remove the big players from that conversation. Now there's a lot of people arguing that it's going to be directly brokered between Kim, the brand and the consumer with, I I think there probably have to be intermediaries, but that being said, blockchain technology and the blockchain ethos allows for like a higher take rate for creators, um, particularly smaller ones. Kim's doing okay, I think. Um, But other people who may not have the negotiation chops uh, might be able to get more money directly by selling you hear musicians selling nfts of their music uh, the take rate is much higher of course than what's happening if they're getting ads on youtube and selling subscriptions so i think the creator economy stuff is going to be really fun maybe a little weird as we go through kim's bathroom but i'm probably gonna <laughs> well i'm sure you'll open the the uh the one of the cupboards and it will all the products in there will be um they would have paid to sit on the shelf won't they mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely so it's a bit like you know when you open it if, if you remember Vogue magazine and turning the pages, <laughs> I know I'm being a bit retro to saying that, but and and it would say there was a Photoshop, so photo shot, sorry, and it would say lipstick by Revlon. Da, 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 da. They all paid for those things, so it's it's kind of you would expect them that that to be a similar sort of thing in the in Kim's 3D. Um, Absolutely, uh, yeah. This is the content medium, and and so I noticed someone just said that you know curation. Yeah, this is curation of e-commerce in the future um, in a way that, you know, Instagram kind of pioneered and TikTok's doing now. And, and there's room to make this better. We have better technology in our hands now. Um, so you you talked about um, uh, the 3D website um, and discovery. How, how do I find a 3D website? How do you find a 3D website? Well, Roblox is a great example. Um uh, uh, you know, it tends to be more popular with people under the age of 12. But that being fa- said, you know, Gucci, I mean, so many brands have done cool Roblox activations and Gucci has this game that like I've given up because it's too hard and I'm never going to win. Um, but it did really have me going for a while and it's fun and interactive and then interactive with their product suite um, as well. And, you know, they if you are running a luxury brand, you need to include people of all ages. You know, if you sell beauty, you want to have a lower price point, you sell five thousand dollar hat handbags you have a higher price point and so testing out these immersive environments and the, the fun and the joy i mean video games are fun um i'm an adult woman i have small children i don't play a ton of video games not that people with that exact demographic don't but um i don't know where they find the time uh but it's uh it i think those are the best examples i think gaming is the best examples now uh and roblox obviously has a desktop app they make it pretty easy um, but we didn't even talk about the user owned like Decentraland or the Sandbox, which are 3D immersive metaverses 
where you know you can go to Christie's or Sotheby's, you can go to art galleries, you can go to raves, concerts, fashion week. Um, and those are, you know, just they're not necessarily the all of these have different graphics, pros and cons, but they give you a feel for what it's going to be like and, and as we evolve and, and what the fun is of being in this 3D world or Second Life. You could go back to Second Life. Mm. And I mean, you do a lot in the um, um, in the, the fashion space. Um, how do you see that changing over the next couple of years? Oh, um, oh a lot of ways. I, you know, it's a very open question deliberately. Yeah. Uh, I think there's so much room for digital fashion. We live our lives online and the influencer economy, I think maybe has some negative repercussions in terms of like the vol the speed of trends and buying things to wear on Instagram and not wanting to wear them again. And I think that for there's, there's groups of people for whom that's important. Digital fashion solves that. Uh, it allows for types of creativity and a much lower barrier to entry for people to get their ideas and designs out there. That is amazing. Um, I actually, my favorite example of that is more AR. I I am wearing real makeup today, but there are lenses that I can just put on my computer, uh, mostly via Snapchat, and I wouldn't have to ever put makeup on again. And that that's nice. And that's true of jewelry and accessories. And I could be wearing a crown right now. Um, I would have happily come to this recording with that, but it, the Snapchat camera requires a lot of bandwidth. You didn't, you didn't come with the ears, so that no, I usually put a cat on my head in important business meetings. I think it adds a little, you know, a little lightness to the experience. So I, I think, imagine. yeah, those are like easy, early examples of what's going to happen. Uh, authenticity for luxury goods. That's obviously a space that's interesting. And then maybe my favorite is what you've already hit on, right? This is like what happens to media um, and as it pertains to fashion and beauty and curation and influencer and creator marketing. I think that is really going to change as we move platforms. You don't want to turn up naked in the metaverse. You might want to turn up naked in the metaverse. I mean, it's open to all. That was it's, a, it's, a, it's a free country. Exactly. I'm just going exactly. to put Jennifer's um, notes up because um, I've done, actually interviewed Jennifer on there. So um, I, I, I haven't read it, much like what happened in St. Louis. You'll see more fashion designers with ability to say fashion and, and you know, matching, matching. Thank you, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That fidgetal or d digital twinning um, and being able to have both options uh, is, is really fun. And if you are spending a lot of time in a game or in a digital experience, or even if your work moves to sort of a 3D, you know, your company starts putting everyone into Horizon Worlds, um, having your outfit with you, you know, some people really enjoy getting dressed for the office. I do. I don't see why that will change uh, when we get into sort of an immersive uh, virtual office experience. Yes, which will come. Which will come. Yeah. McKenna, thank you so much for coming Absolutely. on today and talking. Um, really appreciate it. I mean, I, I just love the, the the way that we can kind of look into the future. Um, and I'm sure it will be great fun um, watching this back in 10 years' time and laughing. Exactly. About None about of this, this will be future. true stupid things that we said because it wasn't anything like this exactly and those stupid little mobile phones Do you remember those little mobile phones yeah. those all things that we had weren't they ridiculous dinky waste of computing no yeah. but it's great and wow you have a wonderful audience these comments are amazing really thoughtful thank you well, uh, 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 Jen jennifer's been on here and i've actually interviewed jennifer she's an, an, a great resource around Web 3.0, if any, and she does a whole load of courses as well on it as well. Oh, fantastic! Um, and there's a and there's a um, uh, there's a whole bunch of people that have made comments that, that are, are from my audience as well, which I really appreciate as well. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Have a great rest of your night. Thanks, McKenna. Thanks, and a good rest of the day for you. <laughs> Thanks.